What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Combat Corporation, your source for combat sports. I'm your host, Al the Postmaster Tomorrow, and today I have a gear review on the Hayabusa Professional Boxing Training Gloves. Alright folks, as always, I am incredibly excited to bring you yet another gear review, but today I am quadruple excited to bring you these gloves. I've been waiting three years to drop by Hayabusa. Today we have the Hayabusa Professional Boxing Training Gloves that are still pretty new to the public. They've only been out for about a month and a half now. I think I bought them uh, the day that I saw them on the website, and I uh, got them about two days later because of the shipping I chose because I wanted them immediately. Um, and I'm going to give you the background story why I knew Hayabusa was going to drop these gloves and why I'm excited for this in a second. Uh, but this is Hayabusa's take on a real professional training glove, and I can definitely tell they're trying to get more into the boxing field, and I know that uh, for a couple reasons too. Um, but it's definitely like their take on like a winning style glove with a couple other different aspects to it. And uh, uh, and Hayabusa did a pretty decent job with this. Uh, but the reason why I knew and why I'm excited about this is because if you recall, way back when, when I started the channel about three and a half years ago now, um, the first video I did was a review on the Hayabusa T3, which is their most famous glove by far. I did the Captain America version, and that was my first video. Well, I shared it on Instagram, and actually Hayabusa saw the review, because it was still relatively new when I did the review, and they basically reached out and said they really liked the video, and they thanked me for the review, and told me to keep going, and all that fun stuff. Well, to make a long story short, I responded to them by asking for an internship, uh, and if they had one, because my major required a internship to graduate, and I was having a really tough time finding an internship that would have worked. Well. I basically wound up uh, asking them, they said, yes, we do offer an internship. Uh, we're based in Kingston, Ontario, Canada, which funny enough, I had been to before because uh, uh, a lot of my friends in the MMA field around here that come from Kingston fight in, in New York. And it was only a three and a half hour drive away. I had a living situation set up and everything. But to make a long story short, the internship never went through because I went up and uh, it turns out we didn't have the proper paperwork for me to work in Canada at the time. So I had to go back home Home. I did like a remote thing for a couple weeks and then unfortunately we stopped right then and there. But my job would have been to help Hayabusa get more into the professional boxing field because I understood boxing a lot more than any other sport at the time. Well, basically, and it still still do, but, uh, but basically... Uh, Hayabusa told me that they were really starting to get into the professional boxing field because brands like Fairtex or Venom started getting into the professional boxing field, especially Venom, who Hayabusa views as a direct competitor to them, uh, you know, and that was a real big deal. Uh, to Hayabusa. So they tried sending gloves to guys like Freddie Roach and Freddie Roach complained none of your fight gloves are in horsehair which is what most of his guys use and none of your training gloves are made out of the same material as winning. Uh, there's not leather. Uh, they didn't like the T3 glove because he felt the short wrist cuff would have uh, cut and scraped people uh, or, or rather the Velcro would have cut and scraped people and the short wrist cuff was bad for uh, wrist support which if you watch my review on the T3 gloves that's just the furthest thing from the truth because of the dual X uh, splint system on the back of the hand and on the wrist itself. Well, basically, uh, at, over the last couple of years, if you've been paying attention to Hayabusa, they now have the T3 and Lace Up, which is more suited for boxers. They have a horsehair fight glove, which is more suited for boxers. They also have, um, you know, different, uh, like the S4 is now in leather and in non-leather uh, versions as well as the uh, T3 uh, that also has lace-ups they have boxing shoes now they have socks specifically designed for their boxing shoes double end bags different speed bags a bunch of different things specifically for boxers and this is their answer to making a winning style training glove so I'm very excited that they finally did this no I had nothing to do with this glove I'm not claiming that at all um, not what whatsoever but I knew this glove was coming for a couple of years now and I'm really excited that it finally got released so so the exact model I have is the 16 ounce blue colorway Velcro closure and you can get it in hook and loop or in laces. 
and there's four different colors and I really think they tried to kind of not necessarily copy winning but they pick the four base colors that most winning gloves come in uh, that you can get right off their website which is black red white and blue I like winning blue so I went with the blue colorway now uh, you can also get them in a bunch of different sizes and in lace up closure like I said and the standard sizes for uh, the white red and blue colors are 12 to 16 ounces but if you want a bit of a different or a bigger or a smaller glove than that if you get the black colorway for whatever reason that goes all the way from 8 to 20 ounces so you have a lot more options if you pick the black colorway and let's be honest black goes with everything i've always wanted a pair of blue winnings and uh, they're always out of stock or they're always on back order for like a month or two and i just don't have the patience for that so i got these uh so i bought these the day that they were released on the website and i'm really excited to finally try these out so let's go ahead and go into the look of the glove um First off, another cool look of it is, is that it comes with this really nice like suede, silky uh, feel type of bag that says Hayabusa at the bottom right there. And it has this really nice metal pull cable as well. So that comes with this. And usually I don't show things like these because most gloves do come with it. But I, but it's a really nice quality bag and it's a really big bag too. And you can use it for other things. I usually just display them outside of the bag, but that's just my preference. But going into the look of the actual glove is as you can see the entire punch surface and everything about the glove except for the velcro they're inside and the logos are a very rich royal blue and i really love this blue and it's uh i almost call it like an ocean blue it's a very deep rich blue it looks really nice and you get that all throughout the back of the punch surface the thumb all the way to the stitching which is also blue that you can see here and then you also have a blue thumb attachment everything about it is blue except for of course on the back we have the hayabusa logo which is embossed into the leather there which means embossed means it's actually stamped and engraved into the leather it's not like a screen print where it's still it's, it's technically on the leather it's actually stamped right into the leather which feels really really nice and hayabusa does that with all of their gloves anyway it's always embossed into it so that's nice and it has the peregrine falcon right in the center the Hayabusa logo, which Hayabusa does mean Peregrine Falcon. And then you have, or Peregrine, however you want to say it. And you got the two lines on the outside there, kind of putting that uh, logo in a bracket. Then we come down to the bottom here, and you have the Peregrine Falcon that says uh, Hayabusa right there. And then 16 ounce, those are also embossed into the, into the leather there. And then on the back, it says Hayabusa Boxing with some Japanese lettering on the side. I don't know what the Japanese lettering means. I wish I Googled that. Let me poke this real quick so we can focus a little bit more. Um, but I don't know what the Japanese lettering means. Uh, I wish I did. It probably is just Japanese for Hayabusa, but you got the Hayabusa logo there. It's Hayabusa Boxing with two diamond stamps here. And that is also embossed right into the leather, but it's not white. And I was wondering why that might be, but I actually like that design. And it's the same way on the right glove, so it's definitely not a, uh, a fault in the design. It looks nice, and it kind of has that classic uh, look and feel to it, I guess, when you see that. It's kind of like having a plaque on your glove, almost. Now, talking about the glove itself uh, and the design is the entire outer shell is a different type of leather than I've seen Hayabusa use. It is a really high quality full grain cowhide leather and it feels absolutely amazing. And it's one of the softest leathers that I felt. It feels like Rhea's leather to be honest, which is nice. And you have a really thick hide to pull right off. And what makes that nice guys too is with a glove like this, when you have softer leather, it makes the padding a little softer as well. Uh, because imagine you have something stretched so tight over it that it's constantly forcing the leather down and it makes it stiff and firm all the time. It's not loose off the padding, but it's definitely not too tight to where the padding is going to be super hard. And it feels really, really comfortable. And it's a really soft leather. And you can tell that it's such a top quality grain because look at all those grain marks going all the way throughout the glove and it looks like it was properly aged in tanned leather which is nice uh so you get that all throughout that glove here even down to the wrist cuff has that nice uh nice lined grain marks and so you can tell they didn't shave a whole lot of the imperfect uh they just shaved the imperfections off and that was about it but this full grain leather is really really soft it's really supple um, and it's a really nice durable hide uh, and it does not take long to break in at all in fact when you get this out of the box 
Not only does it have that super nice high quality leather smell that you get from a nice new pair of dress shoes or a nice new leather coat or handbag, uh, it feels and, um, and looks really high quality as well, which is really, really nice. And I compare this type of leather to any other uh, brand that I've used, whether it be Winning, Reyes, Grant, uh, Everlast, Powerlock. I think this is way better than the Powerlock uh, leather, uh, but it's definitely a nice leather that you don't get with uh, the other, like the Kempeki series. It's more of like that brush, kind of stiff Italian leather. Uh, same thing for the LX, it's like that, it's like that shiny, still kind of stiffish uh, leather. And I think that just might be because they stretch it a little bit more tight. And I think that's where a lot of the driving price of this glove comes from, honestly, is the type of leather that they use, because it is a high quality leather. Now I'll get off the leather, I promise. But going into the padding, we have a multi-layered foam, which they call it a pillowy puncher's foam, and they call this a pillowy puncher's glove, which is nice. And I definitely would put it in that hybrid category. It's definitely the best of both worlds. Uh, but this foam isn't so soft that it's not going to protect my knuckles it's definitely that high density foam that you feel in a lot of other pillow or protective gloves like that and when i do this you can see that it reforms really quick uh, compared to some other gloves and it kind of reforms like uh winning but the only thing is when i try and curve it out this way i'm like winning this will turn into a complete ball if I smush it inwards, there's nothing really stopping it from going over, but it still cradles your knuckles because of how soft it is. The other thing is, is that it is one solid piece of foam on the back, all the way from the back hand of the glove towards the wrist, all the way towards the top where the, th uh, where the knuckles rest, all the way to the finger uh, guard area, and then right down here, to the thumb as well feels exactly the same and there is no split in the thumb so all of that foam is one solid piece i imagine it's just glued together multi-layered foam and you got a decent thickness to the padding of the glove right here and because of how thick that padding is you can definitely tell that it is a bit more of a top heavy glove you know a, a lot of the weight is just pulling it right down obviously if i put this and do the balance test i'm going to let go in three two one boom and it's going to fall right over usually a good balance glove you'd want about the wrist but it is a very short wrist cuff but i'll go into that in a second um but the the foam is not so soft that it's going to hurt my hand it's not like heavy hitters because sometimes heavy hitters are so soft that it's like <laughs> it's like you're piercing through a hot knife through butter that's a brand i like those gloves uh but this is definitely a bit more firm than that it's not too soft it's not too hard it's right in the center and it has that nice recoil factor to it when you punch because of how soft it is and it almost is soft enough to like kind of feel like some horsehair gloves out there but there is definitely no horsehair it was all 100 percent foam um and just to give you an idea of how it feels uh when i put it on when i push in i can feel the outline of my knuckle but i can't feel my knuckle knuckle at all it's not like reyes where you can push down and you can feel the bone uh right now i can feel the outline of my knuckle but it's definitely not enough to feel anything and it is a super soft protective glove in that area uh, for your knuckles and so it's definitely in that pillow category but because of how soft that foam is and how much it sinks in and it is a flatter punch surface I definitely get that puncher's feel and it definitely gives you some recoil uh, to get off of that bag which is nice or off the mitts or even sparring I love sparring with these uh, going into a couple other designs which I was really interested in I'm gonna switch to the left glove for some reason um, but uh, I was interested to see that this design was so fat and stubby, kind of like a Muay Thai glove, and you get that with like the thumb shape. It kind of curves upward for some reason, uh, you know, and it kind of reminds me of their T3 model, I guess, in some ways, because definitely it has much more of an open feel with Hayabusa because it's for kickboxing, so you can definitely, you know, like grip really well with the T3s and stuff, and you can get the same kind of effect here, uh, which is actually really nice. Uh, I like that, especially, you know, I, in boxing, I was big into catching uh, and parrying and, and you know pushing uh, hands off to the side when punches came my way so I like a nice a nice flexible glove to open with and that thumb really allows you to be even more flexible the one thing I think professional boxers won't like and most professional boxers use lace-ups anyway is that it's a very top heavy glove like this and that means that the wrist support is not really that great and just to give you an idea to prove how top heavy it is that's basically the whole glove right there it's just not the wrist i mean the wrist support isn't necessarily phenomenal in these gloves 
Uh, the grip is great, but I mean, that's basically the type of club that you're working with, guys. Uh, I mean, just, just look at the wrist support. It's literally gone right now. So I let go of that and it snaps right back. But uh, so it's not the best wrist support and it is definitely a much more top heavy glove. So if you like better wrist support, just get the lace up version. I'd have to think that that would be much better. Uh, but going back to the flexibility of the glove, uh, we talk about the grip bar towards the top is very, very soft and it feels very good. And then the rest of the glove going down towards the bottom, uh, you know, feels kind of like, just like in the uh, grip bar, when I open this, uh, when we go down to the bottom part of the wrist strap, stay there, please. Uh, if uh, I'm here, it feels like a gel almost. It's like a gel padding or like a really thin rubber patch uh, that you would get to protect your wrist, but it's not nearly thick enough to really protect your wrist at all. Uh, the upper part of the glove, of the palm right here, also feels the same way. Um, it is that like gel type material. It feels like a winning NG2 knuckle guard, honestly, is how that feels to me. Uh, and it's not very padded at all. Maybe it's trying to counteract the weight so it can get to 16 ounces. I'm not too sure. Uh, the wrist strap is actually not piped at all, which is interesting. And that's basically what winning does too. So that's why I say this glove was trying to kind of uh, copy winning to a certain extent. But there's no piping on the wrist strap which is interesting it's a very short wrist strap as well it's a it's a decently wide enough wrist strap but it's a very short wrist strap for a short wrist cuff actually uh and there is no like elastic here to like keep the glove tight to you so it opens and fans out really easy which honestly sometimes is good sometimes it's bad in this case it works really well and the interior lining is this basic nylon and it's not stretched tight like a winning one at all it is more of a loose nylon and when you put your hand on the inside sometimes you have to mull your fingers around to get it in but when i tell you it's one of the more comfortable hand compartments i've used i really really like it because there's so much space my hand has space to breathe i do actually wrap my hands with gauze and tape so you guys can kind of feel and get the idea of what uh, i train in so if you're a professional and you wrap your hands every day they definitely will fit your hands which is nice uh, the wrist support like i said is not all that great though when i push this back you can see how easy it is for my wrist to just bend backwards and off to the side like this and push down there is definitely some discomfort there and that foam on the back you would think would kind of cuff and cradle which it does a little bit you know if i'm doing this forcefully uh you know it's going to stop it but going downward you know that's why i say it's more like a of a tie glove because it's like when i go to grip i can really curve for those of you that don't know or don't do tie or or mma it's when you get that grip you want it to curve down like that so you can actually grab something and, and pull it down with a tighter force and that's basically what i have here but it's a very loose wrist so you definitely want to tape your wrist a little bit more if you're going to wrap your hands uh, the other thing is you definitely want to wrap your hands in these because of how big the hand compartment is you got to fill that void somehow because it will pull right off because how much space there is on the inside of the glove. But when you have hand wraps on, I promise you that's not happening. Uh, overall, it dries out really easy as well, and it's a very comfortable glove, but let's go ahead and hit the bag and do the sparring view. That way you can kind of get an idea of how these gloves are in action. So the first thing about this glove, when it tells you that it's a nice puncher's glove and it's soft at the same time, you know, it's kind of that nice hybrid. And yeah, they, it's a very forward heavy glove and I definitely get a nice recoil off it. I can really lay as hard as I want into this bag and I love that about it. I love just pounding the bag with these gloves and the mitts and they're nice and light enough to where it's not going to be too cumbersome on my hands at all and that's really nice. The only thing about it is like I said earlier is that the wrist support isn't all that great so I think the wrist support might bother some people that's why I wrap my hands up tight but it, once again right there you can see me lay into the bag really really hard and that's the one thing I love about these. It has a really nice recoil to it. I never once feel any discomfort in my actual hand or my knuckles and that's one thing i love about these gloves is just how nice and comfortable and solid they are uh, the other thing about it is uh, the grips are really good that you can get with the uh, you know because it has that tie style look 
So look at that blue just pop out with it. And that Hayabusa logo is so simple and, and it works so well. Uh, but I really love just how this blue pops right out right at you. And that's the one thing about these gloves that I really think you'll like is in any colorway, I can see that leather being so shiny and it's going to definitely kind of tell people in the gym that you are, of you know, definitely more professional using gloves that look like that. Uh, overall, they look awesome. And uh, I think you're really going to enjoy getting hit by these soft pillow gloves all right folks so my final verdict on the Hayabusa pro boxing training gloves is I really really like these gloves but I won't say they were a disappointment but I was definitely a little perplexed by it meaning confused um I guess I'm gonna start with the fact that I, I just didn't expect the gloves to be so short and fat like a tie glove. For me, it feels like uh, a love child between winning and Fairtex, uh, to be honest. It feels like a Fairtex BGV-1 in the width and height of the glove and the wrist support with the knuckle padding of a winning. It definitely feels different than winning in the knuckle padding department. It's definitely like softer in its own way, so you can kind of get that puncher's feel and it feels nice. But uh, I definitely don't know if a professional boxer would like reach out to grab these over a pair of winnings because of that short, fat, stocky nature of the glove. Um, it feels nice. I love hitting the bags and mitts with these. I love sparring with these. In fact, some of my sparring partners, uh, you know, at my gym, uh, literally said that it was it was actually nice to get hit by. So either I'm not hitting hard enough and that's an insult towards me, or the glove is nice and soft and you get that because of that leather and that foam. But I was just kind of confused at the design idea behind that, and especially with the wrist support. If I had to give one big gripe right off the bat, it is for sure that there is virtually no wrist support on the Velcro model. Uh, I have jarred my wrist in these once or twice, yeah, so that's why I wrap my, my wrist a little bit tighter with most gloves I use because that's really the one thing I, I concern myself more of, you know, the wrist support than my actual knuckles when I punch the bag, and uh, most people would. Uh, but that's the one thing is that you can just see that it's all the glove is top heavy here. So if I were to make an adjustment here, I'd put like a wrist brace across the top like this to prevent your wrist from bending backwards. Or I think the easiest way to eliminate that, just get a pair of lace-ups and that way you can actually tie around the wrist a lot, bit, uh, a lot better than you could with uh, the Velcro here. So that's definitely one thing I would talk about. The other thing is, uh, I'm going into the negatives first, is that I, although I, I like the idea of not having the Velcro, um, you know, piped, you should tape it, I would think. And the reason why is because this is kind of rough around the edges here, which I worry that will actually cut and scrape someone open. Uh, you know, it is is kind of rough to the skin. Like that's already irritating my forehead. Uh, so, I mean, when you're on the inside, especially in boxing, when you're leaning on each other, it's not like Thai where you can go grab someone with the glove. You know, you're rubbing forearms against each other and you got this thing scraping into your partner's skin. And a lot of boxers will usually train with, you know, not a long sleeve shirt on and they spar in experience anyway i like it i always wear long sleeves but uh you know a lot of guys that don't uh you're gonna scrape and cut their forearms on uh the bright side to that is though is that the velcro is incredibly strong and it's not going to peel off so you're not going to actually cut someone with the velcro itself you're just going to kind of scrape them with that you know not piped uh wrist strap right there uh which might be a little aggravating for some people uh, as far as the comfortability goes, it's definitely a super comfortable glove with the amount of room that you have on the inside of the glove, like I said. It's very easy to pop your hand in. It's very easy to pop your hand out. It's very flexible if you like catching uh, gloves uh, or punches um, with gloves when it comes to like sparring. I really like doing that. It's just the, the palm is not very padded. Uh, to me, it's you know thick enough to where it catches some stuff, um, but not thick enough for some other people, especially if Thai guys use these and you want to try and catch kicks with your partners. It's not that soft. It feels like, um, the material feels like that one patch that you get on the BGV-1, that little lump on the side, and that's how it feels. Um, with that but it is protective it's not as protective as some other ones but i also don't like having too much padding or puff on the palm because then it makes making a fist really hard which in this glove it is not hard to make a fist at all in fact i'm my hand is open right now if you can't tell actually uh you know there is um not a whole lot of space 
as far as that goes, which is good because all I got to do to close my fist is boop. And it does line my hand up in a nice way in a natural punch spot. It does droop down right into that position because usually when you punch your wrist, it does curve down a good amount. The only thing I worry about is, once again, the wrist support going down is not great and side to side isn't great and upward isn't great uh, compared to some other gloves. Which is surprising because every glove I've used by Hayabusa really focuses on the wrist support. So that's why it was kind of confusing to have a glove by Hayabusa that I could say the wrist support isn't all that great. Um, the knuckle padding is super awesome though. It's not too soft to where I can like feel my knuckle pierce through but it's soft enough to where you get a decent recoil because of that high density padding. It's going to protect your knuckles and you get that nice cradling feel and it is nice and soft enough uh, to where you can open and close it. And that leather is so high quality. That's the one thing that I was really impressed with Hayabusa and I think this is where a lot of the price comes from is the leather. Uh, it smells and feels like a very high quality, uh, very well made, uh, patiently made, um, quality piece of leather which is awesome all throughout the glove so you definitely have that going for it which is different from a lot of other Hayabusa gloves that kind of use that stiffer brushed Italian looking leather. Uh, this is a very shiny well made leather and I even think they ironed it out at the end like they do with like Reyes or other gloves and why I say that is because when you have it ironed out you can see the added shine going to it so I mean even if you didn't use these and you put them on display uh, they are a really pretty looking glove. Uh, I think where the glove does shine though is that it has a lot of different options as far as colors go, you know, with black, red, white, and blue. Uh, and then you have 12 through 16, you know, the standard training ounce size. And then you have uh, the black gloves that go from 8 to 20 ounces, which is great. So uh, it, maybe if you have a heavyweight boxer, like a big, big heavyweight boxer, they want to use 12 to spar in, or you want to use 8 to train in, uh, you know, hitting the bags and mitts. You definitely have that. So overall, the knuckle padding is great. The thumb is super comfortable and it guides really well. I prefer sometimes more of a tie glove style or a glove that like curves, but it is a bit of a fatter thumb, but there's plenty of room in it. It's very flexible. I like that. And it doesn't come off of the glove that much at all. I'm pulling this and you can see it doesn't really come off of the glove and it really hides uh, behind this piece of padding here, which is nice. So I've never smashed my thumb at the tip at all. I've never smashed my hand in a bad way. The knuckle padding is awesome. It's just really the wrist support that kind of makes the Velcro version of this glove not all that great in my opinion. I really kind of wish I got the lace up. That's my own fault. So I'm gonna have to try and get a lace up sometime in the future. Uh, the price point of this glove is $250, which I think because of the materials and because of the brand, that isn't far away from question at all, especially with the lace up version. I would imagine you would pay for that. And I think, you know, I don't know if necessarily a professional boxer would choose between these and a winning pair. I definitely think you're gonna wanna get winning compared to these because of the wrist support. Once again, I, I don't have the, uh, the, the lace up version. Um, but in general, uh, 250, I mean, your $50 more expensive than Reyes. Uh, you're about 300, $400 less than Grant. Uh, you know, Everlast Power Locks. I think of it that this way you can get two pairs of Power Locks compared to this. And then, uh, you're only about 200 bucks, you know, or a little less actually. You're about $150 away from getting a pair of winnings. So you're kind of in that ballpark. I think if you put these at 200, you can definitely be a competitor. Uh, for a lot of the other brands out there, but overall they did a really good job. So my final rating of the glove for me is a definite seven to eight out of 10. I'd have to put like a 7.5 out of 10. And the reason why the seven is because if you're a pro boxer or a pro athlete in general, uh, that wrist support in the Velcro model just isn't there. I mean, like I said, look at, this is basically what you're, this is the glove right here is the top part. The bottom part is just kind of there. <laughs> I guess it's, it's, it's something to fasten it to your arm. Uh, but overall, the wrist support isn't great. Uh, I think it's kind of weird that they made it the like the Muay Thai style glove with the fat stocky and the thumb shape and everything else like that. Um, and, and that's kind of weird to it. Uh, I also think the price might deter some people. So, you know, maybe I'd, I'd give it an 8 out of 10 uh, above all. You know, the knuckle padding's great. You're definitely not going to hurt your hands in these. It's just your wrist I would worry about. I would definitely get the uh, the lace-up model, and I guarantee the lace-up model I'd like a lot more because wrist supports and lace-ups is usually better to begin with. But it's really that... that um, 
that wrist support that bothers me. The other thing I don't like is that piping is exposed and I can definitely see that cut or cutting or scraping somebody. But overall, it's a really well-made glove. I, I give my final rating as eight out of 10 for the Hayabusa Pro Boxing Gloves. I definitely think there are better gloves out there uh, that you could get for a similar price or cheaper actually. Uh, you know, and uh, I think gloves like, you know, um, that go for around the same price point, like 200 bucks that I think of, you know, uh, unfortunately a rival to theirs, which is Venom. I mean, there I think there are better gloves by Venom out there, uh, you know, like their hammer or their shield or the giant, I think is not necessarily better made, but I think it's better suited for boxing. I think there are rival gloves out there that you can get for like 150 to 200 bucks that are much better than this i think uh you know if you're thinking about 150 dollars more you're getting a pair of winnings i'd go for those over these uh overall high boost did a very good job uh i'd like to try the lace-up version but i think overall uh they made another great glove um I don't know if they're going to break into that field quite as much as they really wanted to. I think they just need an athlete to really show up and sponsor them, like in the world of boxing. So, But that's my opinion. I think it's a great glove in general. Definitely nice to your collection. Performs really well. I would just go for the lace-up version, folks. Uh, you know, I know Velcro for me I like because of the convenience of it, um, but I think lace-ups would be better suited for your wrist. I'm just glad that I have uh, bigger hands and bigger wrists and they're conditioned to not get smashed so much. But that is a risk factor for people. So with that said, folks, thank you so much for watching this review. If you have any questions, of course, like, comment, and subscribe as it goes a long way to help the channel. Reach out to me on my Instagram page. I usually respond to messages on there and I really appreciate all the love and support we are so close to 5,000 subscribers guys I think we're only 30 people away from 5,000 subscribers which is nuts to me and I really appreciate everybody above all comment below to let me know another pair of gloves or anything that you want me to review or try out and I'd love to do that and if you have any questions specifically about these of course comment below send me some questions uh, I'm gonna have the link in the description below uh, where I bought these and where you can buy them if you want to give them a shot and uh, with that said guys Thank you so much for watching the combat corporation your source for combat sports. I'll see you on the next episode